What's going on guys, Tosker here and in this video we are going to cover many ways to implement the I command interface in WPF. And uh, this is going to have to be split up into multiple videos for the different implementations. And as far as this video, uh, first we're going to jump into our overview slides and take a look at actually what I command interface is and that'll be real quick and then we're going to come back to Visual Studio and learn about implementing single class commands. So to start off, I command is a simple interface you can use in WPF to execute logic in your data context while eliminating the semantics between the UI and business logic. In simple and vague terms, it allows you to execute methods without them being called in your view's code behind. Utilizing this allows you to create abstract executions regardless of where it is being called or what it's being called by. Unfortunately, the importance of using this can be hard to see, and by see I mean have that little light bulb click, in low level applications which most, ap most examples are shown with. The I command interface is very straightforward but can have complexities to it as you build on top of it. So here we have a basic example of what the I command interface is actually looks like. And we have an execute that takes an object parameter and in a very straightforward way it simply just executes the command uh, when it's called. Uh, it must take a parameter of object but it does not have to be used. Can execute that takes an object parameter and this is basically what determines whether or not the command can be executed. It returns a boolean value and then we have our can execute changed event and this is an event that's fired uh, when the logic that determines the can execute has changed. You can create commands by having individual classes that implement the I command interface and this is in my unprofessional opinion a bad practice to carry but is practical in certain situations. Uh, a terrible analogy could be it's not bad having an individual remote for your TV. But it is bad when you have individual remotes for a TV, a DVD player, your cable box, surround system, etc. And in that case, perhaps we should consider using a universal remote. With that being said, that's how we get into our relay or delegate command. When working with the I command, you will also need to understand implementing a relay or delegate command. Unlike our previous slide, this can fulfill the analogy of desiring a universal remote. Utilizing this concept, we can create commands across the application by implementing a single command handling class. So that's enough talking and let's hop over to our Visual Studio so we can start getting hands on with implementing I commands. And as I mentioned, I will be covering uh, the different implementations in multiple videos. So here we are back to Visual Studio and this portion we are going to cover single class commands. And it's essentially where we create individual classes that implement the I command interface and are specifically made for a specific command we want to execute. So if you want to follow along uh, you can create this window content here by having a simple stack panel a text box and then a button that says show message and all we're going to do is type in a string value into the text box hit show message and it will display a message box with the value provided we're going to do this both with and without parameters if you're gonna follow along another thing you need to do is create a view models folder in your project and within that folder create another folder called commands it's not necessary really but it's a good practice and first we're going to start off creating our view model class so this is going to be called message view model and then we create
treat it as a public class. And we're not going to use this for both situations, but we're going to create it anyways. It's a public string message text, and it needs to be a property because we will be binding. Then we need to create a, a constructor that we will be using momentarily. And then we are also going to create a public void display message and this will not receive a parameter at first but we are going to create a message box control period to enter in the using system dot windows and then we hit period and show and simply here we are just going to show the message text property next we need to go to our commands folder add new class and we will call this the, uh, the message command. And it'll be, again, a public class. But this time, we are going to implement the I command interface. Uh, hit control period. And we need to enter in our using system.windows.input. Then our compiler is going to throw a little fit, and it's because we need to actually implement this interface into the class. So you can do that by hovering and doing show potential fixes, or again, hitting control period and enter. And here you'll see it'll generate us our can execute changed event, our can execute, execute, <laughs> execute uh, method that returns a Boolean value, and then our public void of execute. Now, we aren't going to really be doing can execute just yet, but so it can actually work, we want to just simply have it return true. Execute is where it will, when called, execute the method provided. But that being said, we need to actually provide it with our method. So we'll create a constructor, ctor tab tab. And if we wanted to, we could do a message view model and you know whatever and then we could store the message view model in here and then call uh, our message view model dot our display message but that is in my idea a terrible idea because if we wanted to create another view model that used the message command uh, unfortunately it would only work for a message view model so this is why we use an action and an action is essentially it's a delegate uh, that stores a method that you provide to it and in this case it has no parameters so we'll just leave it empty if we wanted it to say accept a string parameter we would simply do the opening and closing type uh, type carrots and do string but we're going to leave it blank and we are going to call this execute then we're going to create a private action that takes no parameters and we will call it underscore execute and here in our constructor we simply will set the underscore execute to our parameter execute and now that we have that we can actually implement our execute method which we will then call our class level execute dot invoke so this will invoke our uh, the delegate that we pass it and if you don't understand delegates uh, it'll kind of make sense once you see us implement it as we go to our message view model now in our message view model we need to create a public message command control period because we need to enter in our view models dot commands namespace because we have it in a separate folder and we will call this display message command and this will be a git but a private set and here in our constructor we will get our display message command and simply set it equal to a new instance of our message command now it's gonna throw a fit because we didn't pass it uh, a the action parameter is essentially a delegate and we can pass it this by simply passing our display message method here so we'll simply type 
display message. And what this will do is when we pass it as an action, it's going to encapsulate our entire method here. It's going to then store it in our message command. And then when we call our message command, it'll invoke the execute and then it'll execute the encapsulated logic if that makes sense for you but I'm going to digress so now we can go back to uh, our main window and now we actually need to start binding but before we start binding we need to go to the code behind of our main window and set its data context so we got our data context and this will simply equal a new message view model hit control period to enter in the appropriate namespace and now that that's all set we can start binding now we're going to get into our binding here and what we're going to do first is since we're doing it without a parameter we want to do a text we want to bind the value of the text box to our message text property. So we're going to do binding message text mode one way to source. And if this is unfamiliar to you, I suggest checking out my I notify property changed video and I cover exactly what I'm doing right here. So we do mode one way to source and then we are going to do the update source trigger to property changed and for those of you who've seen that video you know exactly why we're doing property changed so next we need to go to our button and we need to do our command property binding and this is where I believe we named it a display message command if I'm correct let's see if I am Yep, display message command. So we bind it to this uh, instance of a command we made. And we have that, and that's set, and we have our data context. So we should be good to run our application. And we got our window, and I can type in hello world and show message and bada bing bada boom there we go and you know not that this would make a difference but yep so we got our show message working so we essentially have successfully bound to our command and we bind it to a message text property to be able to display the value without the need of passing a parameter so now the question is, is what if we wanted to use a parameter or what if we are in a situation where we had to use a parameter? Well, in that case, we can't comment out our message text because now we're going to actually supply it. So we're going to have our display message receive a parameter of a string and we will display that parameter in there instead. But we're going to have a little error here, and that's because we have to go back to our message command. And if you remember, I said that the, the this action, one, returns void, and two, it takes no parameters. And we have it take a parameter of a string by doing the opening and closing carrots there with the type. And we would have to do the same above, which is all good and glory, but now we have our invoke acting up. And this is because when we call our invoke, uh, since it's taking a parameter, we actually have to give it one. So we're going to simply pass it the parameter that the execute method is passed. But it's going to throw another fit because it says cannot convert object to string. And this is where we can simply, because uh, since we're doing a single use on the command, uh, we can just cast it as a string because we know that's what it will always be. So now we have parameter as string. Our command class is modified correctly. We'll go back here real quick and all of this is set up correctly. So we can go back to our main window. This is no longer necessary. So we can erase all that. But we do need to be able to access the value of this text box in our XAML if we really don't, if the whole purpose of this is to not use our 
Windows code behind. So we will do X name and we will simply name this control to message box and we will go to our button and now we will access the command parameter property and we will call binding and then we will do element name so we'll get an element here in our XAML which IntelliSense will say you can use the message box and do you think this would be okay? Not really because now what we're doing is we're sending the command parameter the actual text box control when we want its value. So if we want to do that we simply hit comma and now we will use path and we will say text. So it will bind to the text box and within the path of that binding it will go to the text property. So now it will actually pass the text value. And now we can run the application one more time. And we can type in hello world again and do show message and boom still works and in this case by doing a uh, by using a parameter we no longer have uh, we no longer necessarily need that string so now we have even less code by using the parameter so I hope that was useful as far as single class command handling goes uh, in the next video we will cover doing relay and delegate commands both with and without parameters and hopefully in that video you'll be able to see why that's better one last thing I want to ask is in the bottom right hand corner of this video or in the description you should see a link to be able to take a survey for this video because I like to hear your guys' opinions on things you like things you didn't like uh, the video quality, the audio quality. Um, I'm aware of some audio issues. I'm kind of working on that now. But yeah, just take that real quick. It shouldn't take any more than like 20 seconds. And I'd really appreciate it. But my blithering out of the way, we are going to move on to the next episode covering relay and delegate commands.